The first semi-final in the Dominic Smith Electric Senior Football Championship is between Castletown and St. Martins. Um, David, you're obviously very familiar with St. Martins. I suppose you've, you've, you've managed them for a couple of years. Um, they've been very consistent from St. Martins' point of view. They've been very consistent over the last number of years without actually winning one since 2013, I think it was. And Castletown are obviously always there, thereabouts as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, Martins have lost finals in 15 and 17 and been there, thereabouts in semi-finals. Um, Castletown are obviously the reigning champions and are very consistent. Uh, looking forward to the game. Um, it's going to be a tight game. Uh, one I'm really looking forward to. There's going to be great, some great individual battles that uh, whet the appetite. I'm thinking Joe O'Connor on Ben Brosnan. Um, two old foes, Colin Morris on, on Kieran Ling. Uh, Jonathan Beelan on Con Connor Furman, all down the middle. Um, so, so winning the individual battles in that respect will, will be crucial. Um, I, I look at the Martins and, and I mean management wise Kieran is sort of doing a player manager role with, a, with, with support from Brendan and, and Dahi on the line at the moment. I, I think it's a difficult role to play. I, I saw them in the warm up against Horswood last week and he's, he's half trying to run the warm up as well as getting, getting on his game face and if anyone can do it he can do it but it's a difficult job. On the other side Castletown same management as last year, Timmy over them, Colin Sunderland, Tomas Sheehy supporting, uh, you know, a good Castletown uh, backroom team there that, that, you know, have them well organised as well. Um, obviously, injuries are playing a, a key role in the build up to this game. Die Waters, we're probably not going to see him again for the championship. Uh, Paddy Kelly came on with a few in the second half last week, definitely made a difference. If I'm picking the Martins team this week, I'm definitely have Paddy Kelly in from the start. Um, look at looking back to the game, the, the quarterfinals. The Martins put up a big score and a big performance against Horse Wood, having pretty much limped through the group stages. For me, they need to do it a second day uh, for them to be genuine title contenders. Um, Horse Wood probably two weeks on the bounce, where, where injuries caught up in them and tiredness caught up in them. Uh, the Martins at, at times it looked like shooting practice. I don't think they'll get that room against Castletown. Um, Castletown are well organised. Obviously, Anthony will be organising things from the goal, but Colm from centre back, uh, he'll sit there all day and he'll protect that full back line. So again, I don't expect the Martins, um, the Martins forwards to get as much space this weekend. Um, from uh, other interesting things about the game, Rory O'Connor playing wing back. Uh, won't have it as easy going forward, I would imagine. The likes of Jody Shockensy or someone will be tracking him all day long. Uh, ben Brosnan for Joe O'Connor. Ben has come out the field a bit the last couple of days. Probably like to see him closer to goal. Last year, Castletown got a great start, got a got a head start on the Martins, and, and towards the end, the Martins were coming back, but but couldn't get over the line. To make a prediction coming into the weekend, um, it it would probably be Castletown. It, it is Castletown for me. Uh, I. I for the Martins again to be contenders, they need to back it up with a second big performance. I mean, <clears throat> another interesting thing that probably applies to the Intermediate Championship as well, insofar as county senior hurling players, is Martins have four county senior hurlers involved in their in their starting 15. Uh, Castletown have none, and, 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 and they're back full training. So how they're mixing that, and whether it's ideal preparation for county football semi-finals, well, that leaves a lot to be desired, I would say. Well, it'll be interesting to see if it makes any impact on the game. Colm, um, both, of both of these teams had reasonably comfortable quarter-final victories. I suppose no quarter-final is, is terribly easy, but on the scorelines would suggest they were both reasonably comfortable. Yeah, certainly would from this, looking at the scoreline. I think, um, as David mentioned there, it was probably a week too much for Horswood. Um, they didn't bring the same intensity as they had in their previous games. And, you know, it's hard when they're involved in the latter end of, of the Hurland Championship also. Uh, there is. I'm really looking forward to this game now. I think it's intriguing. There's a lot of great matchups. For me, the, one of the vital parts is um, can Castletown cope with Rory O'Connor and uh, Jake Furman? You know, they're the engine of that side, and 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 they bring so much energy and and speed to to um, to the Martins play. I feel Martins are very much through injury, also a team in transition. Um, you know, there's a couple of young fellas after being blooded there as well. We all know about Luke, but uh, you know, you had Jack Devereaux came on last week and he scored 1-1, had a really good outing. Dermot Barry could have had 
whatever he liked last week, you know. Um, Kieran is sitting off and playing that quarterback role, but I can't see Colin Morris really matching up on him. I'd imagine maybe someone like Conor Carty would be assigned that job. And um, Jack, for me, will definitely be on Ben Brosnan. Um, Jack is their shutdown cornerback, and he's going to he's going to follow him wherever he's going to go. Joe, or sorry, Joe Connor. Yeah, uh, midfield is going to be a, 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 a serious battle as well with Liam Coleman and Jack O'Connor. Um, you know, you'd pay to come in and watch that battle alone. Jack's been playing really well in midfield and plenty of energy from there. But Liam Coleman is is probably one of the brightest prospects in in Wexford football for that area. Look, really looking forward to see what he can produce. Um, so if I'm going team in transition versus the machine that is Castletown, they always seem to be never below par. They always seem to be there kicking on, and, and they'll definitely want to be the first team since Hores would, I believe, to go back to back. And um, if, if Castletown can get enough ball into Ben, and if they have. Do you know Jonathan Beelan playing outside of him for anything that he can't get himself? I, I'd have to say I'd, I'd fancy Castletown to get through in, in a really tough game. And uh, a game for, for the purists, I think, is going to be end to end stuff. And Brian, your thoughts was it four and five that Horswood were the last team to do back to back, or three and four sometime around then, was it? Uh, five and six. Yeah, I think that was the last time the back to back yeah. was done. Yeah. Uh, it's a very hard thing to do uh, for some reason. Uh, Castletown are. They seem to be in the semi-final every year, at least. I, I, I can't remember the last time they weren't in a semi-final, at least. Um, look, they're they have all you know. They have the big names. Colin Moore still flying at centre back. It's a credit to him. Uh, you know they have they have Beal and they have Ben. You know they they have they have a lot of good footballers. Uh, the Martins last weekend, I was very impressed with them. Uh, not just by the football, but by their work rate. Uh, you know, Horswood, yeah, it was their third week in a row. I'm not sure if that's that big a thing. You know, I just thought the Martins' work rate was savage. Uh, Horswood got no time on the ball. Uh, started the game well, but once they didn't take the scores at the start, the Martins, the Martins took over, and and they have, you know, they just have a lot of good players. You know, the O'Connors and and. Uh, for me, the, the matches, I think I said it on the commentary last week, was you know, Jack Devericks. He scored 1 1, but he was involved in an awful lot of good stuff. You know, uh, they're they're a good team and they have they might have momentum at the right time. Uh, Dahi and Linger seem to be getting a, a great home album. Uh, it looked like they got through the group sort of as they wanted, which sometimes the Martins seem to do, just, just do enough. Uh, but I thought they, they they stepped on the gas here a bit last weekend, and 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 I even even looking at them last weekend, I felt if Howard Wood had to have a bit more, I still think the Martins might have had another gear. I just think, I think they're in I think they're in a good place, and the only thing that maybe might be the slight interference is what David touched on there. If if the hurlers are back, I don't know what kind of training you know, but if obviously if the the county hurling team are back training. Two, two nights a week I think is, is what's allowed so you know you're going to have they're going to have four of their senior football team maybe not training you know as much as they'd like this week um, whether that's right or wrong that's for another day I suppose but uh, for me I, I I give the Martins a hesitant vote I, I think it'll be an absolute cracker of a game and, and it's not for any you know uh, Castletown there's no real reason why I'm picking them. I just have a feeling that that that, that Linger and Dahi are getting a good home out out of players, and uh, I just I have a feeling that the Martins could 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 go all the way this year. To be honest, and and, and David, just a, I'll ask the three of you the same question, I suppose. But are, are both of these teams underachieving in terms of titles? If you look at the Martins, one in 2013, and Castledown, I think, have only won two since the 1980s, considering all the focus that they have on football and all the players they've had. Yeah, probably. Um, Look at the, uh, everyone knows that probably the primary focus down in Pierce's town is the hurling, and and I mean they've they've won two or three hurling, uh, two under Tomas I think it was, and and then four altogether possibly, one football. Look at I mean in fifteen and seventeen got to two finals, um, big regret in fifteen probably that they didn't get over the line against the Jameses, 
are they underachieving in football? Yes, I would say so. They have a, a serious uh, amount of talent down there and probably should be winning more. Um, they had a couple of Premier Football minor teams coming through and um, probably we're seeing the benefits of those teams on, 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 on the Martins team at the moment. They're very young. Uh, they have a lot of pace, as Brian said, um, all over the field and mixed with that experience from from Kieran and, and, and even Jack and a few others, um, you know, probably should be winning more Castletown. Like, I mean, it's so hard to go back to back as we've talked about, but, 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 but they're there, thereabouts every year. Um, they're so competitive, their sole focus is football. Uh, I mean, are they a great team? Probably not yet. If they win back to back this year, I'd say yes. And Colin, what are your thoughts on that particular See, topic? No, no one has a divine right to win a senior football, and it, it like it annoys me when the keyboard warriors go on about Busher. When you go into Leinster, look what happens. But you have to take every championship on its merit, and every year there's a different team comes out of the blue for the senior football. And you know it's it's about how much work and effort you're you're you're, you're going to put into it. Yes, there's times things won't go right for you, but having names on a piece of paper, no matter what they've won, is not going to win you any title. So, for the population and, and I suppose the, the, the underage structure in, in the clubs, they would have a better chance than most, but, um, you know, it's so hard to do dual as well, you know, for the Martins, like, I mean, to be competitive and, and, and to win the titles they've won in Hurland, Detron and Owlert and trying to be the dominant force. Of course, football is going to be on the back foot there, um, and especially popularity-wise as well, but, you know, they've... they've, they've they're perennial quarter finalists, semi finalists every year and you know, to get you know, to, to, to up them steps I suppose on the last game after the final, you have to put in something a little bit different and you have to really focus on it and, and uh give everything you have for it. So you know, I, I think any the any of the teams senior football are, are capable of winning it, so I'd never kinda say they should be winning it or the other team should be winning it. You know, everyone has a fair go at it and it, it all depends if the ducks line up for you that year. And final word then for you on this topic, Ryan? Yeah, I, to be straight, I think both of them will be, will be disappointed with the amount of titles they've won over the last you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, I know Castletown have been unlucky a couple of times that, you know, if 06 in a replay after extra time, we bet them, you know, they, they should have bet us the first day. Uh, they, they went for a goal in the end of it, they had to tip it over the bar, they were two points up. And, we got the opportunity and Davy Davy Shannon scored a great point to equalise and we won the replay after extra time. But Castletown have been been there so many times, they'd definitely be disappointed with the return they've got from being in the latter end of the championship so often. Uh, the Martins is a is a whole different conundrum, you know, they're just um there's no doubt Hurland is number one. Uh, there's no doubt all of their best hurlers are also probably their best footballers. And that in itself, I suppose, poses a bit of a problem. Uh, a year like this should, uh, uh, something like what I touched on with Ferns, a year like this where the championship is split, you would imagine would suit the Martins. As, as we've touched on as well, the thing that mightn't suit them is the fact that the senior hurlers are back training. But uh, the bottom line with both, both of them is, yeah, I, and I don't think any of them had mind is saying it, both clubs will feel they, they should have won more senior football titles, but it is, you know, senior football in Wexford is very, very competitive, and it's hard to get out of a group, never mind go on, and, you know, when you get out of a group, you have to win three knockout matches, and that's, that's, that's a big ask, because, you know, y there's very little between, you know, you have 12 teams starting this year in the, in the senior football championship in Wexford, and, and they'd all fancy their chances at the start of it. You know, they might play it down or they might not, you know, they might, they might go shouting about it. But, but deep down, you know, the first thing you do is try and get out of the group. But it's very hard to get out of a group. And then you have to win three knockout matches in a row. And that's a big ask for anyone. And that's probably the main reason why nobody wins them back to back very often. And, you know, it's, it's not something that we're going to see done that often, even in the future, you know. And it would be, it would be a huge achievement. And as David said, it would put this Castletown team down as a great team if they could go on and put, put two titles back to back. Well it'll be certainly very interesting, the lads predict a tight game, I obviously think it's going to be a tight game again, I'm going to give the nod to St Martins.